to each one of you here today. It's great to be in God's house. It's great to have each and every one of you here with us. I uh, would like to make a few quick announcements. Uh, if you'll notice, uh, we're going to be having a uh, celebration of me being here 10 years. I don't know if that's trying to tell me it's time to go home or what. But, uh, we, we, 10 years, uh, we're going to be celebrating that here on the 11th. Encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, you see some other announcements there. In fact, you will be getting some stuff out here very soon about our 100-year uh, uh, anniversary here at our church, 110 years that we're going to be celebrating in September. So you'll be getting some stuff on that here uh, real soon. Uh, also, if you're visiting with us for the first time, I encourage you, if you have a book, to do the tear off and uh, get us the information about your visit here today. Uh, so we'll know about that and anything that you have a need of, we'd like to meet that. Uh, if you know someone that might have a visit or somebody you know that needs to have prayer, you'll get that on our list and just drop that in the in, uh, offering plate. Or if you don't get to do that, we'll just leave it in the pew. We'll pick it up there as well. So all visitors, we are glad that you're here with us today. Uh, anyone else have a word before we continue with our service? Let's begin with a word of prayer. The Lord, we're just so thankful for everybody that's here today. And I pray that you'll bless each and every one. Lord, we're so thankful that you're here with us here today to meet our needs, to direct our lives. And I pray, Lord, that you'll touch us today. And I pray, Lord, that you uh, meet every need. Go with us. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray and ask. Amen. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine that when that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for the Jesus? Or in all you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine I can only imagine 
precious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we could be here today, Lord, on this beautiful day and just worship You. I pray, Lord, that You just be with Brother Miles as he brings the Word today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that uh, we'll all hear those words and use them in our daily lives. I pray, Lord, that uh, You'd continue to bless each one here and uh, have us do the things You would have us to do. And we're most thankful for Jesus, Lord. And it's in His name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, you turn with me this morning to the Gospel of Luke chapter 16. Gospel of Luke chapter 16. A good friend of mine I grew up with, a good friend of mine, we used to do puppet shows together back when uh, uh, I was younger. He got a lot of rental properties and uh, I trust him with anything I've got and he trusts me with everything he's got. He was going out of town here the other day, not out of town, he was going out of the country, in fact. He called me up, he said, I'm going to be gone for about a month and... Uh, he got a lot of rental property. He said, uh, I need you to take care of that while I'm gone. Yes, just rolls off your lip before you think about it, doesn't it? I didn't realize he had one empty that had to have the yard mowed every week. And I sure prayed nothing broke or nothing tore up while he was gone. Because he had trusted it to me, and that meant I was going to have to do some work. Now, if he were to said, would you hold on my wallet to get it back, I wouldn't have had a bit of problem with that. You know, no work involved. I can handle that. But sometimes people give you something to do, there, there's work involved. And it talks about here the unjust steward. It says in verse 1, it said, He said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Now, this story does not call it a parable. It says, Jesus said, that there was a certain rich man. Apparently, this was a true story. It's not hard to see how this would be a true story, how that this rich man entrusted his goods to a person to take care of them as he goes on a journey. And I think about Jesus as he's going on a journey to prepare a place for you and I, and he's left for you and I to be his stewards. Now, being a good steward, many times we can get selfish. Now, I don't know what you think of people that are selfish, but I'll be honest, it's not pleasant to know people that are selfish. You all agree with that, don't you? People that are selfish. I mean, they're sickening people that are selfish. Can you imagine my wife at home? Going in there and cooking, cranking up that stove and putting that batter together and cook a cake or something other than I can smell it. And I go in there and I go and get a bite and she said, that's mine. I'll say, you shouldn't be selfish. You need to share. Well, he talks about a selfish servant. A steward that's selfish. Sinners are selfish, you know that? That's what a sinner is. They're selfish. They care more about themselves than they do about anything else. A sinner cares more about themselves than anything else. Than God or their neighbor or the truth. It's about them. In fact, a lot of selfish people will even seek salvation, but they seek salvation for a selfish reason. Now, do you not believe that there's a lot of people that they want to go to heaven, but the only reason they want to go to heaven is because they don't want to go to hell? They can care less what's in heaven or who's in heaven, just as long as they're there. That's selfish. That's selfish. And I'm going to be honest. I believe this with all my heart, and I believe God's Word supports this. When I get to heaven, I'm not going to see selfish people there. So people that are seeking salvation only for their selfish gain 
is missing the fact altogether. Can you imagine me marrying my wife just because I'm selfish and don't want to live alone? I wouldn't make much of a husband, would I? A marriage is coming together to do... You know what? I I married her because I couldn't live without her. That's right. I couldn't live without her. A fellow told me that one time. He said, you don't marry who you think you can live with. You marry who you can't live without. Right? So I, I married her for because I need her. And because, listen, I want to do things for her. When you're dating, if you can think back about that far, some of us, what did you do for that one that you love? Anything that you could think of. I mean, you might even get, you might go buy a rose out of the wild blue just to give it to her, right? You, you might just go and... Uh, Take her out to a nice dinner. You just do things for somebody you love. Because you're taken care of. Now, we need to live for tomorrow. Not just for today. We're living for tomorrow. Now, this unjust steward, you need to understand, he was selfish and he was looking for things for himself. The steward was to provide for the hereafter. When he left his things in charge uh, in charge of this steward, he was to take care of it for when he comes back for a future date, it's going to be something there. Can you imagine you going on a... Traveling, I know Wayne, he was gone here for a few weeks and uh, I don't know if he had one, but can you imagine him, him having a garden? He said, I need to take care of my garden while I'm gone. Now, you may be better than I am about gardening. If he'd come back after four or five weeks and looked at his garden, if I'd have been left in charge to take care of it, he probably won't know where it's at. Because the weeds are going to be outgrown what he had growing in his garden. Because he had to work at it. I mean, if he left it in charge, he was expecting to come back and find a garden, not a weed patch, when he come back. Now God is entrusting us to take care of something that he plans to be something when he returns. But he said, what did he say? He had wasted his goods. He had an opportunity, but he wasted it. Now, folks, I don't want to waste anything, do you? Now, I was taught to clean your plate. It's evident, isn't it? I don't waste anything on my plate. I mean, if I have to poke it, and I'm going to get it in there. I mean, I don't want to waste it. My wife, we go out to eat and you pay this big meal, uh, money for this big meal and, and she says, oh, I'm full. I'm thinking, there's food still there. I don't like to waste anything. Don't like to waste it. So she's got to the habit where she'll get this to-go box and she'll just take it home. To do what? To waste it. She'll let it ruin. She don't even, sometimes even leave it on the table like she boxed it up. Wasting it. But he said, waste. The book of Numbers said this, the children shall wander in the wilderness for 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. It said that God did what to the Israelites? He led them out of bondage, out of slavery. Leading them to the promised land. Everything was being provided for them, but yet what did they do? They wasted their life wandering around in this wilderness. There's people that's wasting their life wandering around in Huntsville, Alabama. They don't have satisfaction. They don't have joy. They're not being stewards with what God has given them with. I thank God God's given me another day to live. Aren't you? What are we going to do with this day he gave us? I'm going to tell you, many are just going to waste it. Just going to go preaching a little while, going to go home take a nap, then might watch a little TV. We're going to waste this day. When we're going to be able to look back and say, man, I wished I'd been more faithful with what God had given me. 
Remember the prodigal son? It said many days after the younger son gathered all together what had been given to him and he took his journey into a far country and there he said he did what? He wasted his goods. It was given to him, it was right there in his hand and he wasted it. Wasted it. Now, I know some of you big football fans here and I know it's getting close to football time. Man, can you imagine your team coming down to the last minute? Quarterback rears back and he's got this guy wide open. Somebody broke their assignment and he stands there all alone. And you got a bad quarterback, throws it 20 yards over his head. You think, man, we wasted this opportunity. I mean, you don't look at him as a 20-year-old young man. He makes mistakes. You think, frying over open fire. He wasted this opportunity. I mean, we get irate, don't we? Because we can see it right there, right there at our fingertips. We can see it, but it goes, it's wasted away. God's Word talks a lot of places where people waste what God has given them. They're not just with what God has blessed them with. Hebrews said it this way, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this comes the judgment. Everybody's going to die, and everybody's going to get an account of how much stewards we have been and what we have done with all the things that we have been given. I think of people that's wasted what God blessed them with. I think about King Saul in the Old Testament. King Saul was blessed. God brought him up, God made him king, and God gave him this uh, army of God, and God's anointing was on him, and the blessing was on him, and God gave him instructions, and he did what? He was unjust with his stewardship that God gave him to be king. And what happened? He wasted his opportunity, and you know what happened at the end of his life? He just committed suicide. He said, life's not even worth living if I'm not going to be able to live it to its fullest. It ended in suicide. I think of another person in God's word. Just this guy. He walked with Jesus. He saw the miracles. In fact, he had the anointing of God upon him where he even did miracles. He was entrusted the money that they t- took around and, and paid their bills, bought the food, and different things they had to do. He was a treasurer. And Judah did what? He wasted He wastes his opportunity to be a great person. Maybe like Peter. Maybe like John and some others. He wasted it. To the point, what do you think he felt about himself? He committed suicide. I see a pattern here. People that uh, fall short of being a good, just servant don't even find life worth living. Samson. God gave him strength. Be able to defeat hundreds. He was the strongest man that ever lived. But what did he do? He become unjust with what God told him to do. He allowed his hair to be cut. You know what happened to him? Suicide. Suicide. Folks, I see no happiness. I see no future in wasting what God has given us. It's been proven in facts throughout God's Word and even in life that people you've seen around you. There's no happiness, no prosper in not being faithful in what we've been blessed with. I, I think people that have messed up and wasted an opportunity, maybe you feel like, maybe they spent years that you've wasted away. I'll be honest, I, I got saved at the age of 15. You may think I was a young age, but I'm going to be honest with you. When I was 15, I thought I'd done lived half my life or more. In fact, I thought I was smarter than most. Then my eyes was open and I really saw how dumb I was. But I'll be honest, when I got saved at age 15, I kicked myself. Why didn't I get saved young, uh, younger? Because I thought I'd wasted so much of my time. Doing a lot of worldly things that I didn't need to be doing. But I know a lot of Christian people that have walked the aisles even at a young age, but I think they're still wasting their life because they're not being faithful in what God's blessed us with. David, remember King David? 
God blessed him. Even at a young age, he rose him up to be king and he was doing great things. But all of a sudden, he had the anointing of God on him. But yet what happened? He became unfaithful and unjust where sin came into his life. And he became selfish. Selfish. What do you think King David did? He was selfish. He said, i got to cover this up so nobody else knows. Anybody that's anybody already knows. God knows and he knows. But he said, I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to try to hide this where nobody can... Oh, and yet, the more he tried to hide it, the more it became selfish, the worse things got. Until finally, until finally, listen to me. What, you know what he done? He repented. He got on his face and started repenting. You know what he started doing when he started repenting? He started thinking of others, not himself. He started praying for his son, which was going to die. Now, it no longer is himself. It's somebody else. A person that's selfish is thinking about who? Me. When we start getting repenting uh, to God and become a just steward, we start thinking of others, not ourselves. That's what David did. He started thinking of others. I, I think the woman at the well, you remember when Jesus came to the woman at the well? This woman had lived a very uh, poor life, a worldly life. She was selfish. She was thinking of herself. She was trying to make a dollar for herself. No matter what, who she had to be with, no matter what she had to do, she's thinking of herself. But all of a sudden one day she met Jesus at this well. And when she met Jesus, some things happened. Jesus told her really about herself. And really what she done, she realized she didn't waste in her life away. Because Jesus knows me better than I know myself. And when she left there that day, she didn't leave selfishly. She left her water pot. She didn't say, that's mine. I got to have it. She left her water pot. And she did what? She went to others. She started thinking about others that needed to come to Jesus. She no longer was selfish. She started thinking of others. I think of others in, in God's word. Zacchaeus. You remember Zacchaeus? He was a little bitty man. Climbed up that sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see I've been wanting to sing, brothers. I just thought I'd try a little. But he, he wasn't a popular man. You know why? He wasn't popular because he was selfish. He just wanted more money. He'd come to get a little tax. I'd get a little extra. I'd get a little more money. He's thinking about himself. He's not thinking about, well, he's got to feed his children. he got he got crops to take care of. He, he was thinking of himself. He was selfish. He was unjust. And guess what happened? He got up in that tree and Jesus told him to come down. When he met Jesus, a repentance come upon him. And guess what happened after he met Jesus? He wasn't thinking about himself. He turned around then and said, Hey, I took too much from you. I'm going to give you back. I'm going to give you more back. I'm going to make it right with everybody. He's thinking of everybody else other than himself. He's not selfish anymore. Isn't it wonderful when we're doing the things we ought to be doing, when we're the faithful, just stewards, we're not thinking of ourselves, we're thinking about others. Even in the New Testament, we've got Saul, which is now known as Paul. He was doing selfish things. He was taking care of himself. But I want you to, after he met the Lord on the road to Damascus, I'm going to read a passage uh, from God's word that Paul wrote. He said, Though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself a servant unto all that I might gain the more. He said, I'm going to do everything I can to gain people. I'm not, it's, I'm not in this for me. I'm in this for others. He said, Unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law. Being not without the law to God, but under the law of Christ. That I might gain them that are without. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by some Save some. By some means may save some. What happened to Saul? 
He no longer selfish. He's thinking of others. To be that steward, you don't need to be selfish. If we look here at this passage, I, I know we're going to run out of time, but I don't hurry. This rich man came back and he found this selfish, unjust steward that he left in charge. In verse 2 he said, He called him and he said unto him, How is it thou hear, that I hear thee this of thee? Give an account thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. He said, I'm thinking take your job away from me. But I want you to give an account of what you've done. Give an account. Now I can imagine the first thing that probably goes through the mind is Wayne's fault. It's Jim's fault. Somebody's fault other than mine. But he was a smart enough guy to know standing before this rich man he knows the truth. And I've got to give an account. I got to get an account. When I was in school, I can remember many times coming around every six weeks. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Every six weeks, I had to give an account of what I've done for the past six weeks. I used every excuse under the sun. But the outcome still was the same. Grounded. Grounded. We got to give an account. He knew he was going to give an account. He knew that he wasn't going to have an opportunity to make it up. My problem was in school, I, I would try to go five weeks doing my thing, and then last week I'm going to dig, I'm going to make it up the last week. I'm just going to be honest with you, it don't work that way. How many people in life waiting? I'm going to go and I'm going to enjoy life. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And at the end of life, I'm going to make things right with God. Let me tell you something. It just don't work that way. You keep putting it off, putting it off, it's going to be put off. You know when, it, when it's time? When it comes time to judgment, say, man, I wished I'd have not wasted that opportunity. I wished I'd have took advantage of it. I look at my age now. I'm thinking, man, how much of my life have I wasted? Have I wasted? Because people that waste it, they don't find happiness. you got to believe this steward here is not a happy man. It says in verse 3, Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? What shall I do? He said, For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. He said, I cannot dig. I think he probably thought, I'm too old or too weak. I can't do that. Too big? I'm ashamed to beg. Too proud. I don't know what I'm going to do. Then he said, I... And resolve what to do. When I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their household. This is what he had a plan. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou, my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. He said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. And he said unto another, How much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. you got to understand, these guys are excited. you going to cut my bill in half? I don't know how much you owe on your house. What if the mortgage company come up and said, Just cut it in half. Just cut it in half. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Oh, they're excited. It's a pretty good dude. I mean, he might not have been popular before, but he's popular now. And he said his Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. He said the people of this world are smarter about worldly things than godly people are about heavenly things. He said, he's taking care of himself. You know how he took care of himself? 
he started thinking of others. To take care of himself, he starts thinking about others. If I make them happy, they're going to take care of me. His master said, you're doing wisely now. You're thinking further out. You're not thinking about the presence. You're thinking about the future. Folks, so many people are worried about the present. That's what a credit card is a lot of times to people. It's the present. Oh, I can live it up. I'm going to enjoy it. Man, I got money to burn. I had a person told me one time, I knew they had financial problems and they're struggling through life. And they come in and they said, Preacher, we just bought some brand new furniture. I said, You bought some new furniture? Did you come in some money? He said, No. He said, The furniture store down there sent us an extended amount of money that we had to spend. I said, but you're going to have to pay it back. I know, but if we didn't spend it, we were going to lose it. I said, you didn't have it to spend anyway. What do you mean lose it? I mean, a preacher hates to say to his congregation, you're stupid. But she was. What do you mean you had to spend it? She was thinking of the here and the now, not what I, how am I going to pay for it later? What's going to happen later? She was thinking about the now. I got new furniture. How about this? Zero down, zero interest for 30 days. $7,000 due in 30 days, you know? What's coming next? People's living this life not thinking about what's coming next. If you were to die right now with a heart attack, what comes next? Accountability is what comes next. What have you done with the years God blessed you with? If it's 15 years, if it's 20 years, 40 years, 50, 60, 70, what did you do with those years? What did you do with it? We won't think about it here. What did you do with this week? What are you going to do with the remainder of this day? I believe God's got all the time in the world to look at every bit of it. Are we thinking about ourselves? Are we thinking about the future? First thing we need to do is think about ourselves. We need to get ourselves where we need to be. Now, if I was in the ocean and and, and a bunch of you guys were swimming around, and all of a sudden we realize we're in shark-infested waters, you know what's the first thing I'm going to do, don't you? I'm going to get out. Because I'm smart. Okay, I'm getting out. The second thing I'm going to do, after I'm out, I'm not going to just thank God that I'm out. I'm going to turn around next and try to help somebody else. I'm going to give them a hand. I'm going to try to pull somebody in. I'm going to try to holler and say, Judy, look, there's a shark. Get out of the water. I'm going to warn people verbally and physically. I'm going to try to help folks. I'm going to get involved in other people's lives because I've been took care of. Now I'm worried about them. Folks, I've been saved. I know that. I know I'm going to heaven. I know there's a a place prepared for me. But folks, let me tell you, there's other folks in sharp infested waters that I should have a concern for. I should be concerned for others. I need to be just in what's been given me. Life and opportunity been given me. Are we going to be faithful with what God's given us with? I know I've not covered it all, but I want to read a few verses before I quit. Verse 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Some things that God's given us is so small. Small things. Small things. You know how hard it is for me to come to church? That's simple. Some people can't even do simple things. You know how hard it is for me to just be smile at somebody and be kind? That's simple, isn't it? Some people can't be faithful over small things. You know how hard it is just to pray for somebody to ask you to pray for them? But some people aren't even faithful over small things. God says... We 
commit sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us for our sins. Some people are not even faithful enough to ask for forgiveness of sin that's crept in your life. We need to be faithful on small things as well as big things. We don't need to think about the here and the now. We need to think about the future. We're going to give an account. Are we unjust? Are we going to be just? Are we going to just live our lives miserable? Or are we going to change and start thinking about somebody other than ourselves? Let us pray. Dear Lord.